the Truth or Girls. Hi everyone, Truth or, Truth or Girl Sonia here. So this is a video about your face and what people can tell about you because of it or what they think they can tell about you because of it. Oh, here's an old book that I have. It's called The Mismeasure of Man. It's about how back in the 1800s, they were, they were trying to figure out if you could tell if someone was inclined to criminality or loose morals or something by the way their face looked. I mean, this was, and it, this was a pseudoscience at the time. And they had, they ha here they had, a whole, there's a whole bunch of pictures here of all these different people. And they were trying to figure out whether you could tell if somebody had a certain nose, this meant they were a certain kind of person, or even if they had a certain kind of foot that that meant they were gonna be a hooker. Oh, and if you're wondering why there's a bunch of holes in it, it's because I really loved this book, but I was on a lot of drugs when I read it, so I, I burnt holes in it. Good thing I didn't set myself on fire or we wouldn't have a video today. Anyway, they were completely misguided. They were a bunch of eugenicists, and this was totally unscientific. This was total pseudoscience. It was just like racist and eugenicist. But these days, they're still trying to see is there a connection between how you look and what you're really like? Except that now they have a whole bunch of scientific stuff that they can do. And it turns out that there are some things that people can tell about you just by looking at you. Number one, you really can tell how intelligent a man is just by looking at him, scientists say. And the key is a long face and bigger distance between the eyes. So it turned out that people were able to somewhat accurately assess men's intelligence just by looking at their facial features. Although this worked for assessing men's intelligence, but not women's. And they think it's because with women, the more attractive you were, the more intelligent uh, you were likely to also be perceived. So this just clouds people's judgment completely. So then they tried to look at all the facial features and figure out which ones go with smart people and which ones don't. And they said, by contrast, we found no correlation between morphological traits and real intelligence measured with IQ tests, either in men or women. So they could not figure out what features or combination of features could sort of reliably indicate IQ. And yet when they asked people to assess people's IQ based on their looks, they could kind of get it right, at least for men. So how that works remains a bit of a mystery. Here's another one on intelligence. Are you an idiot? Yes. Well, science has figured out how to make your face look more smarter. -er. So here's what they found. If your face suggests that you're alert and slightly happy, people are more likely to perceive you as intelligent. So why would this be? Well, you can look at the original study here. Eyelid openness and mouth curvature. The more open your eyes and if your mouth has a little slight up curve, uh, how this influences perceived intelligence beyond attractiveness. Because of course, the more attractive you are, the smarter -er people will think you are. But this goes beyond that. They said, because depression and tiredness adversely affect cognitive capacity, we reasoned that facial cues to mood and alertness affect impressions of intellectual capacity. So the good news is um, this is one you can fake. If you want people to think you're smarter, -er, all you have to do is have your eyes uh, more opener and try to not look <laughs> droopy. If you look like this, people will think you're not smart. huh? You know, it did cross my mind that if the corners of your mouth are drooping, you could get some injections to just make them look perkier. And if you can't afford them, I guess you could just use tape. Look at me, I'm smart. What else can people tell about you from your looks? The signs of sexiness. Why some people are just more attractive. Well, obviously, people can tell how attractive you are. And this has a lot to do with symmetry. Facial symmetry goes beyond just looking cute. Facial symmetry is also linked to agreeableness, extroversion, and conscientiousness. So good-looking people generally find it easier to make friends and hold down jobs. I think it's probably just uh, part of the halo effect. If you, I think if you've been getting a lot of negative feedback your whole life, it, it's going to affect how you feel and how you interact with people. So maybe if you've been getting a lot of positive feedback, it's going to make you more sociable. The importance of symmetry does not stop at facial features. Studies have also shown that women partnered to men with symmetrical bodies have the most orgasms. 
and those with symmetrical breasts are more fertile than those less evenly endowed. So symmetry is also a sign of fertility. Do blondes really have more fun? There's some connection with your hair being lighter as you're younger and with your level of fertility. So on a subconscious level, men seem to perceive that the lighter hair is a, a sign of youth and fertility and that's attractive. Obviously, this only applies to people who could have had light hair to begin with. And intriguingly, Caucasian blondes usually have slightly higher estrogen levels than brunettes and are likely to exhibit finer infantile facial features such as a smaller nose, smaller jaw, pointed chin, narrow shoulders, smooth skin, and less body hair, all of which are perceived on some level as signs of youth and fertility and are therefore considered more attractive. However, a recent study which attempted to determine the most beautiful woman in the world picked a brunette. So if you're not a blonde, don't lose hope. How about your personality and your health? How your face betrays your personality and health. Yes, your face is at it again, telling everybody everything about you. Number one, assertive structure. Consider the face's bone structure, whether it is relatively short and wide or long and thin. Carmen Lefebvre at Northumbria University has found that people with higher levels of testosterone tend to be wider faced with bigger cheekbones and they're also more likely to have more assertive and sometimes aggressive personalities. See, this jaw kind of tells you, ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Plump cheeks. Well, apparently, um, having more fat on your face is an indicator of possibly more health problems. And the reason for that is that people who have more pear-shaped bodies where they carry their weight, their extra weight on their hips, tend to have decreased risks of health issues like cardiovascular disease and such. And the People who carry it as a more apple-shaped around their middle, they also tend to carry more fat in their face, in their cheeks. So there's some connection between where you carry your fat and your state of health. And on some level, people can pick up cues on that from your face. And then there's the skin tone. This is not about race-related or pigmentation-related skin tone, as in how much melanin you have, or whether you have olive skin or beigey pink. This has to do with carotenoids in your skin giving you a kind of golden yellowish tone. The glow of health in turn contributes significantly to your physical attraction. More so in fact than the more overt tones that might accompany a trip to the tanning salon. So eat more carrots and it makes you hotter. Also a blush. Okay, having a little bit of a blush in your skin is apparently something attractive too. A, because it shows good circulation, and two, because it can also be an indicator of higher fertility. Can people tell if you're gay or straight? I feel like I have to cover this one too. All right, there used to be a whole bunch of studies that said, oh, people can tell if people are gay. You just flash the image uh, in front of them for a millisecond and they can tell fairly accurately. And then this later was debunked. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there to do with stereotypes and all kinds of variables. But gay and straight men may have different facial shapes, suggests a new study. But here's a surprise, maybe to some people, that the gay men actually tended to have more sort of typically masculine features. So what happened was they had people rate whether these people these guys looked more masculine or feminine. Turned out that the gay guys rated more masculine. And then when they asked them, which ones do you think are gay? People were totally wrong because they thought they had stereotypes that made them think that the ones that look more feminine were more likely to be gay, but it turned out that had nothing to do with it. So can they tell you're gay? Apparently not. Okay, here's a really cool one. Interesting. Can you tell if these faces are rich or poor? Study finds our expressions can give away our economic standing. I'm going to try to sum this up. So apparently, if you've been living in poverty, by the time you're 20, it is etched into your face in the form of sort of lines and drooping around your mouth and your eyes, some wrinkles and stuff. It's etched into your face in such a way that people can tell. They can look at you and they can somewhat accurately guess not 100%, right? But they, they can sort of get a clue whether you could be, whether you're more likely to be rich or more likely to be poor. Researchers say the phenomenon occurred regardless of race and gender or even how much time the participants were given to look at the photos. The best rich composites 
and the best poor composites are shown above. So the people on the part labeled C are rich and the people on the part labeled D are poor. Uh, so basically the people who are rich were more likely to look relaxed and satisfied and the people were, who were poor were more likely to look stressed and miserable. However, people can only pick up on this when you have a neutral expression. So here's me with a neutral expression. But if I smile, do I look rich now? And I'll tell you, I noticed something else about these pictures, that the ones that were rich, they tended to be sort of the more attractive ones. And I wonder if because when you're more attractive, people tend to give you the halo effect, remember, from the intelligence studies. When you're more attractive and you're more symmetrical, the people also think you're smarter and that you're going to have a better personality. And so if people think you're attractive and you're smart, maybe you have an easier time in life. You have more opportunities. Maybe you have an easier time getting a job. And maybe that just really affects your earning potential. So is it because they're poor that they look like that? Or is it because they look like that that they end up more likely to be poor? So that was it. A few things that people can tell about you or think they can tell about you by your face. I thought it was pretty interesting. Let me know what you think. And uh, thanks for giving this video a thumbs up. Thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.